Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Let's see. Let's see what Vincent has. Let's see what Vincent has. Whoa, Vincent just wrote a novel. Vince is going to take me nine. It's going to take me four hours to read this. Hold on, hold on. Yikes! Hold on. Uh, sometimes I feel like this scenario happens to me a lot. A series of multiple trades. No problem. Next trade I win. I let I took trims. This is a dollar. It stops me to break even. It's like so trims. My profits are kind of small. Next trade I win. Take profits. Up a dollar and stop out break even. Still profits kind of small before I take profits. <laughs> Next trade, I enter, immediately reverses on entry, stop me out at another dollar. Uh, after all that, I end up slightly right at break even. Then I get frustrated because it feels like I'm not going. The actual is trading, leaving as I'm being right at 20 quarter percent. That one. That's going to raise it back to the quarter percent. All end up back to square yeah. one. Okay, let me see. Let me see how I can answer it. Let me let me let me answer it the best way I can. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's that's the first. Well, that's definitely one of the one of the things I was going to say. Vincent, keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. Not every trade, right? Not every trade is, is a measured potential trade. Most trades are not. Right? Keep this in mind. Most trades, no matter how you trade, right? No matter unless you're a swing trader. Most trades are not measure potential trades. What's a measure potential trade? Measure potential trade is any daily chart that's been putting in a base of at least two to three weeks, right? That's a measure potential chart. So for example, I'm just gonna use the Qs as an example, just, just because it's just a recent, just because it's a, a recent model of what I'm talking about, right? So. We had this 369 breakdown, right, Vincent? We had this 369 breakdown. This is called a macro trade, right? Because you have series of you have series of intervals that stopped at the same price, which made it a very, very high probability trade when it finally confirmed. So 369 is low here, 369 low, 3, 369 low here. On measure potential trades, right? Stocks that are sitting in a channel for multiple days, multiple weeks, longer the better. You want to try to go bigger in those trades. And the reason why you want to try to go bigger in your trades, you already know the severity of what happens if they actually lose that range and confirm. So there's always a higher probability once that happens, there's a higher probability of a more aggressive move or a violent move, right? Especially on, on the short side. And that's exactly what occurred. That's exactly what occurred on the queues. Once they lost that 69 level, and again, they up and down, up and down, up and down a little bit, but they finally cracked and you know the queues went down about two and a half months, right? I think it was like two and a half months. Okay, before a reversal and blah, 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 and Fed meeting and blah, 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 all that, right? But at least that is known as a measured potential trade. And unfortunately, right, before it got to its measured potential of 3, 360, 358, again, there was a Fed meeting. Again, again, we can't control a Fed meeting. That's called a measured trade. I think that's a, a trade that I think most traders uh, most new, excuse me, most new traders should be putting on a pedestal because it gives you multiple times, multiple instances that price action has held, right? Has held in that direction. Once it confirms, there's a high probability it's going to finally go in that direction. The, pro <clears throat> the problem is when you're a brand new trader, you don't know the difference, right? You don't know the difference. And I'm not, I'm not specifically saying to you, Vincent, but just in general, right? Majority of traders don't, they don't know the difference between a measured potential trade, right? Which is a long distribution that finally confirms on the daily chart versus a cash flow setup, right? Versus a cash flow setup this morning, right? Correct. Versus a cash flow setup this morning of a stock that already confirmed that's just basically continuing this price action off the confirmation. So they'll trade it exactly the same way. So you can have a big premium setup, right? You can have a legitimately have a big premium setup and you'll take the same amount of profit as you would with a scalp. And that turns into the problem, right? 
because you're trading you're 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 um you're treating the two setups exactly the same and they're nowhere near the same right so when you're trading cash flow right when you're trading for a cash flow trade like nvidia or something that's just continuation model after it's long gone after its pivot that's when you take the 50 cents that's when you take the dollars right that's that's when you're trading for cash flow when you have uh when you have a scenario of a big measure potential trade that's when you turn around and say hey where's my next measured potential right and that's how you attack it and that's when you start taking profits longer right you start taking a longer profit because you see where the next measure potential could wind up obviously again FOMC had its own little um own little story kind of disrupted this whole move but that's kind of the point the majority of trades that you're going to have are going to be 50 cents a dollar dollar 50 right that, that's kind of that just the way the structure is in the market when you finally get that measured potential trade that's what you want to try to get two three four five six dollars on the trade because that's the whole point that's you're giving you a measure of potential trade so if you're treating every single trade as i'm taking some off up 50 cents well maybe that's the right thing to do for example like on an nvidia trade right on an nvidia trade it only maybe has a couple of dollars before its next rise in support but when you have a trade for example like you know like a Q's, uh below that 369 like you want to give it every opportunity in the world to succeed because you know it's a big macro trade. So depending, you know, depending on what type of setup you're trading, uh, a continuation trade or a macro trade, you're going to adjust how aggressively you take your profits. Obviously today, yeah, obviously today, obviously today it's all cash flow, right? Vincent, it's all cash flow. You know, we talked about it pre-market today. We said basically... Hey guys, we're just looking for crumbs today, right? So when I'm talking about we're looking for crumbs today, that's your first indication, right? That's your first indication. Hey, it's a cash flow day, correct? That's a cash flow day. 50 cents, a dollar, 60 cents, use break even as you stop, correct? If we opened up today, right? If we gapped up today and we had an opportunity to trade NVIDIA today at 420, right? You know, there's a measured potential trade of 10, 12, 15 points, right? So that's where you want to say to yourself, you know what? I'll risk a dollar to make 10, right? Because you see 420, 420 to 411, excuse me, that's nine points, right? 420 to, to, to 4, 411, that's nine points. So you're saying to yourself, okay, I have measured potential in this trade. I'm willing to risk a dollar. The potential to make nine and that's i see that's a big potential trade so unless a stock unless the stock has a really big potential cycle right everything treat everything as a scalp 50 cents a dollar dollar 50 hey if it extends more it extends more but the bigger the bigger potential chart where the next highest probability of a stock can move that's when you start taking your profits longer right so for example I, I give you i give you a, a real-time example here right i'll give you a real-time example let's pretend vincent let's pretend nvidia today hits 411 right let's pretend it hits 411 today and bounces and closes at 4 414 correct so tomorrow we know 411 is the pivot right we know 411 is the pivot and we know measure potential you see it measure potential it has at least five points in it right from 411 to 406 right that's five points so you're saying to yourself you're saying to yourself i'll risk a dollar right i'll risk a dollar or you know if it's some if it stalls out maybe even break even whatever i'll risk a dollar but at least i know i have a measure potential of five right so i'll, I'll hopefully cover 80 percent of my trade into this 406 level and if it still keeps on going, then I know I have another potential of three dollars in the trade. So if it loses four hundred three, then it could get really, really aggressive in my runner. But here, at least, you see your measured potential, right? You see it. Eleven to six is five points. From six to three is another three points. From three to God knows if this thing takes out all three, who the hell knows? Maybe it goes to starts filling in this whole gap of three eighty five. 
but at least you have visual, right? You have the visual evidence of your profit potential for the trade, right? 11 goes to six, six goes to three, three goes to swan dive, okay? But when you're trading, for example, when you're trading, for example, Tesla, right? Like Tesla this morning, correct? We knew, we knew that 55, we knew that 55 was going to be, um, was going to be a big support area. That was the 50 day moving average. So when it took out 55 and started coming up, the problem we all talked about this morning, I think this Bollinger Band was rising. Even that first move would have been like only like two, two and a half dollars, at least the first move, correct? So the, the further, the further, the bigger potential trade that you have in front of you, that's when you want to give it more time to play out, right? You're still risking the same amount, but you want to give it more time to play out, right? Because you know you have a, you have a pot of gold. You already have a predefined, predetermined pot of gold. You already know what your measure potential is. So, for example, tomorrow, right? For example, tomorrow, let's say, let's say Tesla low, today's low is 40, 40, 40, uh, 54, right? So 54 for tomorrow, right? 54 tomorrow only gets it to 52. You see that, Vince? 54 will only get it to 52 before the next bounce because there's only two dollars. So when you're taking a trade that you'll, you say to yourself, my first measure, my first potential in this trade is only two dollars. Yeah, of course. That's when you want to take, you know, you want to take some off of 50 cents, 75 cents, a dollar, dollar fifty, and you want to, you know, and you want to get down to and you want to get down to a runner. At 452, right? But just but just in case it loses 52 later, then you have a big potential waterfall effect. But the key is to go into every single trade, not to say to yourself the same thing. On every trade, I'm going to take 50 cents off. Sometimes the chart is telling you, right? Sometimes the chart is telling you, hey, there's eight dollars in this trade. Maybe take maybe take 20% off, 25% off, down a dollar. Maybe take another 25% off down a dollar, another dollar, dollar fifty. Maybe take another dollar, you know, maybe take down three, three and a half, four dollars and then keep a runner. So every trade is going to be different. And because every single trade is going to be different, you're going to be scaling out on a different way, right? Today, again, today was our whole game plan blew up today. Nothing we could do about it. We talked about a pre-market. You know what I mean? We're, we're looking for scraps today. And you know what? This day played out for scraps. Okay, I don't want to use the word scraps. It felt like scraps, right? It felt like scraps. But, you know, and the video only went down a dollar and change. Tesla only went down, what, 80 cents, right? Got a little, you know, a little bit of flow on, 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 on Tesla. Microsoft at least went down a dollar, right? Microsoft at least went down a dollar. World Alexa Senior Report and TechCrunch that they've cut 30 on their talent acquisition team as they slow hiring. But the point is, every single trade, every single trade is going to play out differently because the the the, the daily chart is going to be is going to be uh, in play. Yeah, just stick to stick to stick to like put this on these Vince. Stick to like in the morning. We always talk about hey, this is the pivot. This is where the stock potentially can go. You follow what I'm saying? So you already know these, you already know in your in your brain, all right, this trade potentially has four points in it, right? Let me scale out a little bit more passively. This trade here has a dollar in it. You know what? Let me just scalp the stock for 50 cents a dollar, right? So based on the chart, you want to give you you want to give that stock based on the chart, not based on you want to take money off. You got to give it off, you know. You, now the key is. If we have a scenario, for example, like Vince, I'll give you a, a great scenario, right? I'll give you a perfect scenario here. Let's say Oracle affirming your previous 65 billion sales guidance. There you go. Yesterday, today, this is long term by 2026 for Oracle, Oscar Romeo, Charlie Lima. Yeah, here's the news on Oracle. So let's let's give a great scenario, right, Vince and everybody else, guys. We're going to give a great scenario here. Let's say, for example, Tesla today trades to 52, right? See that, Vince? Let's say it trades to 52 and then bounces. And then tomorrow, 52 is the pivot, correct? Vince, you see how much room we have from 52 to 40? Right, Vince? You see how much room we have from 52 to 40, right? That's called a fucking organic blockbuster 
Mac Daddy trade, <laughs> right? You have 10, 12 points in the trade, right? I'm going to be a lot more, I'm going to be a lot more aggressive in size and in patience for that trade to work out, correct? I'm going to be a lot more. I'm going to be a lot less patient with Tesla going from 54 to 52, but a lot more patient from 52 to 40 because there's 12 points in the trade versus two. So depending where the chart is on its cycle, that's where you want to get more aggressive or more passive with the trade. And especially if you're an options trader, guys, if you're an options trader, you need Tesla not to lose 54. You need Tesla to lose 52, right? You need Tesla to lose 52. 54 is kind of irrelevant for you. Yeah, it's, again, it's important because it'll confirm the 50 day, but for Tesla to really get loose and really potential for a swan dive, Tesla's going to need to lose 52. Then we got 12 points in the trade, guys. And hopefully option flow will start betting in that direction. So for tomorrow, Vince, before you put on a trade, right? If you're not sure what the measure potential is for the stock, just ask. That's it. Just ask. It takes it takes me a tenth of a second to look at the chart and say, hey, this is the next measure potential. So you already know, right? You already know how passive or how aggressive you want to be with covering your position. So you won't, you won't take a, a, you won't get dealt a pair of aces and go all in on your first hand, right? Think about it. It's like getting a pair of aces. You just go, I'm all in. Wait, what? Does, doesn't make any sense. You have to, you know, you have to at least, you have to at least, you know, read the room a little bit. So that's the same thing when you're putting on a trade, you, you have to know where your, your measure potential is. The bigger your measure potential is, the higher probability you're going to get more aggressive sizing-wise, and you're going to have a lot more patience in the trade. The smaller potential trade you have, right, you're going to be a lot more aggressive taking profits. That's why you always hear me say, right, you always hear me say, especially in a tight trade, guys, take, take on the way down, right? I said that this morning in NVIDIA. I said this morning in Microsoft. I said this this morning on Tesla. Because again, these were just... These were just continuation trades, unfortunately, from their gap downs were long gone, right? Good guys, remember, the pivot on Tesla last night was 61. We were shorting this thing at 55, right? Last night, the pivot on NVIDIA was 20. We're shorting it at 14. Think about it. That, 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 that's a completely different trade. So when it's a completely different trade, you got to completely treat it different, treat it completely different when you're scaling out of your positions. So hopefully that helps, Vince. But again, buddy, stick stick with it. Ask a lot of questions. It doesn't, you know, it, the, the the magic light bulb doesn't turn on in, in minutes. You know what I mean? Some people it clicks right away. Some people it takes a little longer. But that's a great question. That's a great great question. I think it took me longer to read it than to answer it, but it's, it was a great, great question.